So here we are. We've reached the point of the program where we pull out the pop quiz. Are you ready for the pop quiz? Don't you like how he just <laughs> magically <laughs> pulls it out of his jacket? <laughs> Methuen is your hometown, so we're going to begin the pop quiz there, okay? Yes. Hi, Methuen. How you doing? Uh, Great early to see you this morning. His, early in his life, poet Robert Frost lived and worked in Methuen. What was he? We're going to put it on the screen. He Was he a ferryman, a bookseller, or a school teacher? He was a... Bookseller? School teacher. School teacher. That was my, Close, you know, that was my, bookseller. That was my second teacher. choice, Janet. There you go. <laughs> yeah, as we mentioned in the introduction, you're a Wellesley College graduate. Many well-known journalists are also alum. We're going to put three names on the screen. One of these is not an alum of Wellesley. Is it Sawyer, O'Donnell, or Roberts? One uh, of them is not a Wellesley graduate. I'm going to go with number two. Yeah, exactly right. Nora O'Donnell is not. She went to Georgetown. David Wilder Jr. was the Commonwealth's first auditor. What was his political party? Was he, and we'll put it on the screen, was he a Democrat? Was he a Republican? Was he a Whig? We'll say C, Whig. And well, there you go. 1849, he was a Whig. I guessed you're, wrong on that You're one. two for three. <laughs> Here's the final question. Your Twitter profile picture right now is you wearing... <laughs> <laughs> See, oh, that's you fantastic. cannot hide from us, right? <laughs> Is you wearing a sweatshirt that says, not fragile like a flower, fragile like a bomb. And with that phrase, an image of the artist Frida Kahlo. So we have a Frida Kahlo question for you. In the 2002 movie, Frida, who played the starring role? Was it Penelope Cruz? Was it Selma Hayek? Or was it... Zoe Soldano. It was B, Selma Hayek. Man, you're three for four. You nailed it. <laughs> Excellente. Who would have known? You know, I'm Who'd actually a karaoke person. Oh, I don't good. do trivia nights. So well, if we had time left, you could You right. did darn well. Right. You did darn well. well. Um, more serious subjects. Last year, you had a change of heart on the question of driver's licenses for undocumented residents. Mm -hmm. uh, you say changes offered by police chiefs around the state now make it more palatable, um, although it's still in the legislative process. Nothing's mm. been passed yet. Bottom line, should those without legal documents be allowed to have a Massachusetts driver's license? Yeah, I think that when this was going through the Transportation Committee and we took a vote on this, it was something that residents had expressed concerns about on both sides. And in working with the Police Chiefs Association, the Transportation Committee was actually able to produce a compromise bill that did require certain documents from people's countries of origin to prove who they were in coming to this country, but also provided a path forward while they were working on their citizenship and trying to get those official documents through uh, the federal process, which we know can be very arduous and take several years. Uh, and the goal of that bill, working alongside, again, the police chiefs and the Transportation Committee, was to make sure that we were promoting public safety in Massachusetts and that people who were going through the process or are going through the process have a way to get to work and have a way to continue getting those formal documents. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, I did vote to uh, move that bill to the next phase in the committee process. I would do so again and I look forward to continuing the conversation on that and hopefully coming up with a final version of the bill that works for all of Massachusetts so residents. So let's, let's talk about the world that we live in right now. You've proposed to allow restaurants to actually sell alcohol to go for another two years. So it, this, it may sound like a simple question, but I'm curious. If you think it's a good idea, why not make it permanent? Why not just make it permanent now? Why go two years and then whatever and then whatever? Why well, Ed, you permanent? can give my campaign speech for me on okay. this. Uh, this is what I've actually been saying to my my uh, great colleagues in the legislature. I have been advocating for the permanency of cocktails to go. And originally, when we had filed this, we were one of the first uh, in the region uh, to file a provision to allow for our restaurants to sell cocktails to go. It was during a very difficult time when they had been shut down and they had no other options to get their uh, you know, sales up to try to assist with the shutdown that was done through no fault of their own. They were laying off employees, unable to pay their rent, unable to keep, keep their electricity on. Mm -hmm. And we had looked at Cocktails to Go as a way to try to generate some additional revenue. Obviously, these containers of cocktails are in sealed packages. Uh, they are ready for takeout and delivery. If you've ever had a cocktail to go, uh, I'm sure it was enjoyable for you. But it's something that's not just enjoyable for residents. It's actually been something that's created up to 10% in additional revenue. Well, why extend it yep. only for two years? Oh, so uh, I am fighting not just to extend it for two years. I'm fighting to extend it permanently. I have two bills. And the reason why I filed both bills was to... You know, we're, we're trying to get as much as we can get from, from the legislature regarding the extension right now for these restaurants. And, 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 and to the package stores, you say, 
who don't want to have it if they don't. I've spoken to my local package stores, and they are thrilled with cocktails to go locally at the local level. Our but package not the national, store, but not the state. Our package store owners are friendly with our restaurant owners. They're all parts of the same chambers of commerce. They are neighbors. They are friends. They support each other. Who is against this is powerful package store lobbyists who are making money off of monopolizing the industry and saying that somehow it's taking away from package stores. That is not true. Package stores saw an increase in sales, especially during the pandemic, being deemed an, deemed an essential business of sometimes 25 to 35 percent in increases over the course of the last year. So this is certainly not anything that's taking away from package stores. Uh, but it is something that's helping our restaurants to recover. It is something that is creating, uh, you know, joy in the lives of people who, who are patrons of these restaurants. And, you know, it's, 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 it's time to move forward with this. It's time to extend it, not just for the two years, but permanently. It's great to see you. Thank you for coming in this morning and being on the record with Is us. that it? That was so quick. It That's was so it. great to be That's here. It. In and done, right? Our thanks again to State Senator Diana DeZogler.